Hey and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at some demonstrations around notch effect and shadowing effect, which is a really interesting thing in uh, in mechanical engineering. So first of all, let's have a look at what the notch effect is. And the um, idea behind the uh, notch effect is that if you have a component with a notch in it, take for example a straight component with a circular notch, and this is loaded in tension. And you know, say this has a depth. The nominal stress if the notch wasn't there would be uniform, so and the nominal stress, which I'm gonna call sigma norm, is the force over the uh effectively the area that's left in between the uh, notch and the material. In reality, what happens is this value is much higher, closer to the notch. Uh, the real distribution of stress is closest to something that looks like this. And the um, maximum stress can be written as the nominal stress times a coefficient and I'm going to call for now uh, kt. The value is always greater than 1, which signifies the maximum value is, uh, is greater than the value you'd calculate if you were only considering the uh, nominal stress. We're going to draw a part today in uh, FreeCAD, and I'm going to show you the dimensions in one second. However, there's a way to reduce that number. So imagine you have a notch, but, and I'm going to draw this symmetrically, uh, but I'm just going to draw this on one side. Imagine having a smaller notch. The actual stress concentration value is going to be less than the one we considered before. This is called the shadowing effect. So the idea behind this is that uh, you can think of notches acting like kinks in a pipe, and if stress encounters a, a big kink, it just has a lot of um, buildup of pressure locally. Whereas if you have a more gradual flow like this, the gradient of stress is a lot smaller and uh, this actually relieves a bit of the stress with respect to the case where you don't have this extra feature. We're going to try and prove this uh, in, uh, in FreeCAD with uh, FEA and we're going to draw a part that looks like this. So roughly a notch with a radius of 1.5 millimeters uh, again, symmetric around this. And a distance between the two notches, 10 millimeters, and a total width of 18 millimeters. We'll set the thickness to one millimeter, and we'll pop a force on this of 100 Newton can do the math real quick. So the stress concentration in this case is around 2.5, 2.55. The nominal stress would be uh, 100 Newton over 10 millimeter square, which is 10 megapascal. So the um, actual stress is going to be around 25 megapascal, give or take. Uh, we're going to model this in FreeCAD and um, use a parametric FEA to see how much, um, how beneficial is adding an extra notch, how close we can add it, and uh, how deep it needs to be. So, investigating these two parameters. So, um, let's try it. So, we're on FreeCAD. We're going to grab the part design module. I'm going to design this as a solid, like one of my previous videos. I'm going to do it first without the knot, just to check that we've got the right uh, values and results. So create a new body with a new sketch. I'm going to work on the XZ plane, and I'm only going to model the uh, this quadrant. We're going to imagine that it's symmetric. And so I want to draw a circle and a polyline gonna make it tangent in a minute. I'm going to make these two tangent. 
and I'm going to trim the rest of the arc. I'm going to add some dimensions. So this is 1.5 mil. This is 18 millimeters. So, and then this is 10 millimeters. The other dimensions don't matter, but we have to constrain them. So I'm going to call this uh, 50 mil. It's reasonably important that this is longer than, you know, at least a couple of thicknesses in just avoid seeing effects that are generated by this notch. Uh, so let's make it a bit bigger. Let's make it 80. We're going to need more mesh elements, but that's fine. So I'm going to quit. I'm going to create a pad and I'm going to create the pad as one millimeter as we originally said. So that's the quarter symmetry model. I'm going to then create a new FEA analysis on this. Oh, before that, let's make this a um, two dimensional model. I want to go to draft. So in the draft panel, this appears and you can press G and R to hide the um, thing that appeared in the background, the millimeter paper. It's G and then R to uh, to hide it. So grid remove if you want to memorize it. We're going to turn this face into a 2D projection of it. So using face binder and I'm going to call this notch face binder. So none of this is parameterized yet. Um, we're going to have to redo this for the um, parametric study, but let's go to FEM now. FEM will need a new analysis container. We will need to now, as in uh, the previous video, uh, give it a thickness. Thickness is one millimeter and add as a reference the notch face binder. So I want to go back and I'll hide the 3D model so that I can actually click on the right thing. There we go. So that's done. So I'm going to assign a material, use a material for solid, give it aluminium, generic, add the face, click OK. The other thing I wanted to make sure is open solver CCX tools and check that this is a 2D analysis. So here in FEM, beam shell results output 3D. Uh, we'll set it to false because this is not a 3D problem, it's a 2D problem. We're then going to add some constraints and I'm going to set this edge as, and this edge as symmetry. So get origin back on. So we have the references and I'm going to create a uh, constraint displacement. I'm going to add this line and this line is going to be symmetry along Z. So it won't be able to move along Z. So displacement Z fixed. It will be able to slide in X. Um, it won't be able to move in Y as well. So let's just fix in Y. Um, but that's just because it's a 2D model. Uh, rotations. So we can't rotate around X because if we'd rotate around X, then the symmetry would be broken. So you would, you'd be creating a, a sharp, a sharp edge. You wouldn't be able to rotate around Y either because otherwise parts of this would be entering the plane of, plane of symmetry. Save, call this, and this is comically huge. So I'm going to hide it in a second, but this is a uh, Z symmetry. So F2 Z symmetry. I'm going to do the same with this line. So a new displacement constraint on this edge. Now this is fixed in X and we're going to fix the other two rotations. So rotation around Y and then rotation around Z. So it's one displacement and two rotations and they're all different. And that's our X symmetry. I'm going to then apply a load to this end and the load was 100 Newtons. 
constraint force, add to this line, the load is 100 newtons, the direction is uh, x axis. So that's now assigned. We have to mesh the part, so click on notch face binder, click on uh, net gen, and let's set a maximum size of one millimeter, see how it comes out. Let's see what the result is, so I mean, we can do a quick convergence analysis. So this is everything, let's just run the solver, write input file, run Calculix, and we are expecting about 20 megapascals of uh, maximum stress, see if that happened. It's about 30 megapascals, um, we are overshooting a bit, let's see where that is. And that's in the position that we... So let's now go back to um, to our body. We're going to change a couple of things. I'm going to draw a second notch. I'm not sure why I'm still seeing the results, but let's not worry too much about it. I'm going to create another notch similar to that one. I could have used slot, but let's do this quickly. And of course, every child feature here is going to break. The um, face binder is not going to work, so I'm going to have to delete it and recreate it. So the two parameters we wanted to control were the uh, so I'm going to set the radius to the same amount, so 1.5, and then I'm going to set the horizontal distance of this as one of the constraints. Uh, so let's start from the smallest value we can get, let's call it 6. It's quite close, uh, maybe we could do less, let's call this 4. We're going to name it as not spacing and then the other thing I wanted to parameterize is the depth so let's dimension these call it six maybe use well or maybe seven as the maximum and call this notch depth so that failed but we can fix it by setting these two to be collinear and then horizontal and we're back. So 7 mil is a little bit higher, let's set this back to 6. And then we want to move this around basically, so let's leave the sketch. That's modified our part and it's working quite well. As I said, notch face binder is not gonna work but I'm going to remove this and add a new face so delete and it's going to cause a cascade of chaos so we're going to have to redo a couple of things so go back to draft face binder So yeah, FreeCAD crashed miserably, um, but it recovered the file, all good. We're going to go back to draft. So I've had to delete the um, analysis object because it was crashing. Turn everything back on. And now we can create our face binder. So And there we go, so the uh, von Mises stress has decreased, so we're at uh, 2.4, kind of closer, well, lower than the original notch stress, so this is in principle working, but I wonder, is there a magical position and distance where, and depth, where this is beneficial, or 
okay, is, is this the best position? And uh, to check this, we're going to use my, uh, my library, FreeCAD Parametric FEA, and um, parameterize these two. So let's switch over to Visual Studio Code and uh, do a small amount of programming. And I'm just going to copy an older example that I had just to avoid uh, doing all the boring stuff. The um, model in this case resides in a different directory. So that is the path. I'm just going to add backlashes to it. The variables we want to change, let's have a look. Let's rename the sketch actually. Let's rename the sketch to not sketch because we want to find our constraints inside uh, inside that. And it looks like I forgot to name one of them. Yeah, so this didn't notch depth. This didn't register. You can see now it has appeared in the uh, sketch named constraints. So we got notch spacing and notch depth. So let's call this in object is notch sketch. The first constraint is notch spacing. And the spacing is going to be, uh, where did we start from? Four millimeters. And let's go all the way up to 20. Um, for now, we're going to sample three points just to see if everything is working. And I'm going to create another, add another dictionary. This is going to be called notch depth. The depth should be more than the radius at least. So let's start from two millimeters up to six. And again, I'm going to sample two for now. Let's try and see if these values actually work. So notch spacing four millimeter that's the default notch depth two millimeters see if that works turn the pad back on and go back to the body yeah so that doesn't create any errors it's working well up to six and up to 20. that works i suspect this is not going to do much but let's try and find out. The new feature in uh, the code is that you can now ask for the outputs you want. In this case, I'm just going to ask for the von Mises maximum. So I'm going to apply the numpy.max function to the results from this variable. And set up the FEA. And for now, again, I'm going to do a dry run. So no results and no plotting and see if this is working and so we made a small mistake um, we changed the wrong parameter so it's trying to find an object called notch depth but it can't find it and now it's it's telling us that we've made this mistake so we actually have to find notch depth inside notch sketch and run this again. So these are the cases we're gonna run. They all seem to run properly and now we can run the actual parametric sweep. So let's not save the results as a paraview file for now. Let's plot them and let's not save a CSV for now. Run these. And these are the results. So there is some indication that the spacing increases the um, stress. So if we set these two apart, then the stress goes towards the nominal stress. With a um, shallow notch, we don't get as much advantage. So I set these values to something a little bit more refined. So let's stop maybe at 10 mil. And let's do eight values. Let's do eight values of depth as well. And, and this is where this is really powerful. So I can just run it. 
and it's going to take around six minutes to run um, so I'll see you in a second so we're back the um, code finished and uh, there were a couple of numerical errors that I need to figure out so if I enable the six millimeter uh, depth there is something going on here where the stress is shooting up um, I will try and find out whether this is an issue with the mesh or something else but I need to um, export all of the um, Paraview files to do so which my code allows you to and if you look there is a sort of combination of values that give you a minimum locally the best performing uh, if we exclude the six the really close one the um, five and a half millimeter notch depth has um, some good values around uh, seven mil spacing and if we um, if we make the notch a little bit shallower the optimal distance is further away and so you can see how there is a sort of curve that gives you the optimum value and uh, you could extract it by exporting the data frame and doing some uh, maths on it but what's really interesting is there isn't a fixed distance uh, of the second notch to the first notch where the stress is minimized and um, yeah, so that's um, everything for now. If uh, you want to have a look at the model that I used in this project, you can find it on the GitHub, uh, links in uh, the description. And if you want to use FreeCAD Parametric FEA in your own videos, I'll put the link down in the description. And a link to the tutorial that I've done a while ago should be somewhere around here. Uh, thanks very much. Let me know if you like this and if you want to see other content uh, covered on the channel.